ensure that there is quality in whatever you are doing. So there are a lot of challenges at our hands, especially in the developing countries. And that's what they'll be detailing today. So thank you uh, for the Project Technical uh, Study Group for bringing this to us. And uh, I wish everyone a, a very good deliberation. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Section Chairman uh, Bola Bada, uh, for the warm uh, uh, opening remarks and uh, for giving uh, some of us the opportunity to once again lend our volunteering spirit and experience, you know, to the good of uh, the society. That's SPE, and more specifically to the Polaco Section One O Three. This study group, uh, you know, has, just as the Section Chairman has. Uh, highlighted is focusing on uh, projects, you know, and uh, looking at projects within the context of the oil and gas industry, and more specifically, uh, looking at projects from the point of view of the modern day era in the industry. You know, I mean, the industry is uh, in Nigeria started in the beginning before Nigeria gained independence in the late 50s, you know, and uh, we have transited, you know, over the years and uh, we have evolved several times over. So it's another unique opportunity for us to again, uh, you know, deconstruct a subject that applies to almost every practitioner or player in the oil and gas uh, sector, uh, which has to be projects. You are all project managers in one way or the other, whether you are a reservoir engineer, you are a production technologist, a physicist, uh, a drilling engineer, a safety person, you name it, facilities, whatever it is, you are you manage a project from start to finish. You know, and the project is supposed to be run within a specified period of time, within a budget, and most of all, and most importantly, you know, uh, to be delivered as safely uh, as humanely uh, possible. Uh, so um, this uh, project team is composed of a crack team of members, active SP members. I'll just run through uh, the list of uh, my, uh, the project uh, members. My name is Debo Fabami. I, uh, I was uh, I've had the privilege and opportunity of being the project lead. Uh, working with me on this project group, uh, I have a Mecca Duruzo, uh, Hilary Oboga UJ. He's going to be the uh, presenter for today. I'm going to be introducing him in detail uh, shortly. Uh, Ismaila Ibrahim, uh, Julia Aboto, Patrick Tawari, Ife Inwa Judokia, uh, Urushola Adebule, and Ayodeji Ademi. Uh, so, uh, again, a warm welcome to all of you that have endeavored to log on. I, I can see almost all the group members are already here. For those that are not group members, but are other members of our society, again, I want to acknowledge uh, already 19 people here. I would have loved to run through the uh, acknowledgments one by one. I see a few names that I uh, recognize, a few of my friends. Uh, Adrian Okwere is on here. Uh, I can see a few other people anyway. But uh, without wasting too much time, I would uh, proceed now to uh, quickly introduce uh, the speaker who is going to be doing uh, severe justice uh, to the subject of the day. By the way, the title of the presentation is going to be presenting on is Common Challenges in Oil and Gas Project Management in the Modern Era, Impediments to Effective Execution. Uh, like I said, the speaker is uh, uh, Hilary uh, <coughs> And uh, I'll just quickly uh, run through his uh, bio uh, data information. So Hilary Oboga is a, an electrical technologist, is an electrical engineer instructor, project management oriented SPE young professional. He's an active volunteer. He's currently affiliated with the University of uh, Benin. And uh, he obtained his first uh, national diploma in 2017 and later obtained uh, his HND in the year 2011 in the field of electrical electronic and engineering technology department from the Federal Polytechnic uh, in Aochi in those states. He's currently uh, on his Bachelor of Engineering program uh, with the University of Port Harcourt and he hopes to graduate later this year, later this academic year. Okay. And uh, he's also currently in pursuit of project management professional certification, that's PMP. PMP. Uh, apart from this, he has recently also received full tuition scholarship from the Project Management Institute, PMI. He's also a member of the Nigerian Institute of Professional Engineers and Scientists, NIPIS. Uh, he's a Nigerian Association of Technologists and Engineering, NATE. Uh, he's also a member of the Project Management Institute, PMI. And of course, uh, a member of, uh, a proud member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers, SPE. 
uh, he's married, and uh, he's blessed uh, with a two-year-old son for now, uh, more kids in the making, I believe. And uh, he is uh, from the Doe states, uh, in Quebec, local government area. He speaks English as son, and he understands the name language as well. He was born uh, October the 5th. Uh, so, uh, on these notes, I want to uh, welcome uh, Hilary uh, to take over the screen now as it does justice to it. Uh, Hilary has been a very active member of our group, very energetic and very, very, uh, you know, involved and uh, he's been contributing a lot in, our, in lots of our interactions. And I want to really appreciate him for that. So, well done, Hilary, a true young professional of SPE. I will uh, pass on the uh, screen to you now so that you can... Uh, quickly run through. Uh, I know you have about uh, 12 or 13 slides to present. So just uh, make it uh, brief. You know, uh, I don't know if there are any time constraints, but it's important that uh, we, we finish it on time so that afterwards we'll now invite those members of our group that are here in attendance to make contributory remarks and they will not take question and answers from the audience and participants. Uh, thank you very much. Hilary, you have the screen. All right. Thank you, sir, engineer. Fag Benin for the introduction. I'm grateful to be here this evening to be among the project technical for HP session 103. So five, 10, 20 years ago, I never imagined of becoming a project manager, but the career has been so exciting. I'm grateful that I'm in the field. Now, the topic I'm going to be talking about this evening is common challenges in the oil and gas project management in the modern era, impediment to effective execution. Now, let me tell you something. A month ago, I was moving around my city, in Benin City. I came across some several projects that was half completed. And this project has actually a lot of money have been have been channeled into this project, but they were not completed. So what actually came to my mind, what I conceived in my mind was that something else might have happened. Then I related to project failure. I related to project failure. I, I, I tried to analyze what might have been the causes of this project. Maybe it might be Project uh, cost overrun, schedule delay. So I try to analyze those things. I really find out that it is actually the challenges that affect these projects that was not was completed, that result to abandonment of those uh, of those projects. Now, in this topic common challenges in the oil and gas project management in the modern era, impediment to effective execution. I'm going to be focusing on off-screen, mainstream, and downstream project activities. Please permit me to share my screen, and I will quickly do that. Then I will take you to my presentation outline. Now, this is my presentation outline. We have the introduction. We have the floating time. If as you as a project manager, when there is a floating time, what do you do? How do you reduce or solve these challenges when you are executing your project? So we are going to be looking at that. We are going to be looking at not enough time, which is another factor that affects project successful execution. We are going to be looking at too many reports and poor communication. We're also going to be looking at hurry up and faster. That is another key point. We're also going to be looking at out of control cost. Then I'm also going to be looking at the coolest staff. I'm also going to be looking at the impossible dream or um, on focus project go and I'm still going to be looking at summary and recommendation 
then we will go through the questions and answer aspect. And I want to make you understand that a topic like this, we always, hello? A topic like this, we always bring up a number of questions. So I want to assure you that I'm going to address as many questions that I can in the time we have for this project. And first, please let me quickly take this time to appreciate my project's uh, technical study group for the support they have uh, given to me. I am really, I have appreciated you guys for the support. You guys make this uh, presentation a reality today. I'm also going to be appreciating our current uh, session chairman, engineer, Bola Adebola. Thank you. And your ESCO, you guys are doing great. I'm also appreciating uh, all the past administration. They laid this foundation for this current uh, administration. You guys have done well. And to all our members within and outside Nigeria, I thank you all for turning in. And be rest assured, I acknowledge that, of course, I acknowledge that although we may technically not be in the same place, but together we are in. So next, I'm going to be looking at the introduction aspect. Introduction. With focus on off-screen, mid-screen, and down-screen project activities, project strand of oil and gas sector from current future state to where, from current state to his what, its future state. So how do we ensure that execution of project is cost effective, scope is maintained, and the project is on budget? Do you understand that, or do you know as a project manager, if wrong decisions are made, problem arises and eventually becomes a delay? and becomes impediment to successful project execution. If these problems are not properly solved, they have a, 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 a variation losses running into millions of dollars, not to even talk about reputational losses or even a severe consequence for some careers. And that is what we are seeing in this present era. Many people have actually lost, his, lost their job because of this present era with Anna, especially this period of COVID. So in this presentation, I'm going to be highlighting possible and I, I'm going to be highlighting possible areas for oil and gas partitioners to improve and optimize project execution and eliminate losses that could have resulted from poor project decision and management. Now, if you look at this picture here, you see that when there is poor project decision management, the output of poor project decision management is always cost overrun. You have also a delay. He said, if you have planned for one year, you find out that you have, you completed that project with almost one and a half years as a result of what poor project decision management management. Then you also have project failure. What are the causes of project failure? Project failure may be as a result of a key team player have left the project or there's no fiscal resources to manage the project. The project can also be as a result of the project itself is no longer what, viable or the performing organization have lost interest on that project. So all these are outputs of poor decision and management. So next, I'm going to be taking you to point number one, which is floating time dates. If you are a project manager, you cannot start a project as when it ought to have started. So what do you do? Now, if you look at this picture here, you can see these project team members, they are confused because there is no information from the project manager. This woman here is a project team member. This man here is a project team member. They are confused because there's nobody communicating with them how they should commence the project. So if you, as a project manager, you have 
you are facing this type of problem in your project. So the first thing you need to do is to reanalyze the priority for the project. So how do you do this? It's for you to redefine your approach in executing your project. It's for you to redefine the study parts. You conduct another analysis to see if there are things you can remove and that there are, there are things that you can, you can add it. Then another point that you should also follow is that if there are delay to project kickoff, quickly as a project manager, communicate this in a revised project completion date to the management and the project team. Then another thing you should also do as a project manager, if the project needs to be completed in line with a fixed schedule, quickly communicate it, the constraint to the management and then get someone to start the project or you adjust your schedule accordingly so that your project uh, team members will not be in a, a state of confusion or will not be reaping uh, frustration as these two uh, team members are currently what are currently uh, doing as you can see right here in the picture so next i would like to move on to the to my next uh, point what what exactly is now i'll be talking about not enough time. In a project, when a project is about to start from the project management planning, you define your schedule. You define your timeline. When the project you ought to have what finished, the starting date and the finish date depends on the type of project, whether it's a small project or it's a multinational project. Now, if there's no enough time, as a project manager, how do you ensure that you solve these type of challenges. First, you try to eliminate any work that you see is not necessary. Then skip tasks that do not account for project or sources. Then another way you can also overcome this uh, challenge is that you use uh, decision matrix, which will help you to assign various activities, the correct various activities and responsibility and role to your project team. Then another way for you to also go about it is for you to say no to someone that will ask you to ask to add tasks that will interfere with project priority. As a project manager, you should be able to say no to some addition or for some functionality that your customer or your stakeholder will want to bring in. So it's not everything that you as a project manager should accept. And if you must accept anything that will result to not enough time, you ought to follow the normal procedure for accepting an addition into the school. Then another thing you should also do as a project manager is for you to delegate activities and involve other project team members. So how do you delegate activities or tasks to your project team member? You do this by creating your own confidence on your project team members. You allow them to make decisions on their own. And by this, you are building really confidence in them. That's what you should do as a project manager. So when you do not have enough time in your project manager next time, try to always delegate activities. They involve other project team members. So this issue of enough time in your project future can be what can be eliminated. Next. I'm going to be too many reports and poor communication. In the project environment, you will, you will agree with me that communication in project management takes 90%. So when there is no communication, there is no effectiveness. So how do you ensure that there is proper communication? Because it is communication that will drive the sources of your project. How do you rapport with your team members? How do you rapport with your stakeholders? How do you rapport with your sponsors? How do you communicate with your customer, even your contractor, or those who you are going to be uh, assessing, or your third people that you bring to come and do a job that your team may not be qualified to do? Now, if you look at this picture here, which I believe everybody is seeing, you see that the project manager, this is the project manager, is trying to communicate the 
project status report to the project management team. Now, because the project manager here, the communication, I mean, the report ought to have be simple and understandable. But the project manager, you see that the project manager is not do, it's not do what is expected of him. If you see this lady here, it's part of the project management team. It's fed up because it's not what is expected from the project manager that is actually doing. Look at this second man here. This man is just saying, please, just round up and go. I'm fed up with your report. And look at this man here. This man is totally frustrated. He doesn't even know what to do. The project manager is talking, but what he's communicating does not correspond with what he's supposed to work. Yeah. And as a project manager, what you're supposed to focus on in this kind of project status report is you focus on your um, uh, project uh, risk register. Risk register is a register that actually comprises of how you plan your risk, how you're able to identify your risk, the qualitative and quantitative analysis, the impact analysis, the probability analysis. How do you plan your report? So that risk register ought to have be one of the reports that the stakeholder or the project management team wants to hear from the project manager. And another uh, report that the project manager should have also given to the project management team is the stakeholder report or stakeholder register. Stakeholder register is a register or it's a document that comprises the list of those people who are partly or importantly or very much impacted by the project you are executing. So it consists of their uh, updates. It consists of their contact number, their uh, responsibility, their address, and everything about stakeholder. So you have the risk, the uh, stakeholder register. So all this register also have built and one of the reports the manager ought to have what give to the uh, project management team. Now, what you also do as a project manager is for you to always visit team members regularly on a regular basis so that you continue to what they continue to what update you. They meet with project people informally. For instance, on the, on the neutral ground, you can just meet with your team member and ask them how is the project going because they are the people that are working on this project. They are the one you may not be physically there, but they are the ones that are going to be giving you updates. So if there is no proper communication, if there is no rapport, you will la you will lack vital information that your project team will give to you that will help you to prepare a good project status report that we you will channel to the project management team. Then another thing you should also do is that as a project manager, except you are in a meeting. So if you are not in a meeting, always keep your phone open because you may be, you, you, you will be contacted from time to time. So when there is too much report and there is a poor communication, what is going to happen is that there will be, it will affect or impact your schedule. It will also affect the quality of your project, then it will also cause, it will also impact the motivation, which you can see that, you wish you can see from the project management team here. So all these are the effects of poor project communication. So next I will be talking about hurry up faster. Now, when you are in a project, you will see now which the project, which the management team wants you to meet up with some deadline, maybe because there is an opportunity. So if the project ought to have taken two years, they may ask you to complete that project a year and six months because they have cited another opportunity elsewhere. So what do you do? You implement a crash schedule to get tasks done faster. How do you do that? How do you do that? It means that you are going to shorten the duration of that your project. For instance, from two years to one and a half years. It means that 
you are going to bring in more resources. And doing this, you are going to be, it, it will impact your cost. Because for you to now bring a project, a, a skin, a resources from outside, a project that ought to have taken two years, you are now focusing on one and a half year. It, it means that it's going to affect your resources. Uh, it means that it's going to affect your cost. So that is another way of doing something in a hurry and moving faster. The another thing you should also consider as a project manager is when you're that duration, do, uh, when you're that pressure, is that you should always consider a faster alternative when necessary. Then consider the trade off in terms of other business priority, use of resources, the, and the cost of getting things done faster. So as a project manager, how do you involve trade-off in your activity? Is that you, it's an exchange of resources for something that is not, that is some, that for something that you desire. That is trade-off. So if you see, if you want to involve or consider a trade-off method in your project management faster, is that you, in, you bring in a, a resources you use the resources to exchange resources because you desire that resources to help you in making the project faster. Thank you. So next, I'm going to be looking at out of control cost. Now, if you look at this, my year is a project manager. This project manager is confused because of the decision he has made. You have allowed the cost to grow in proportion. The cost is now out of control. So what are the res what are the effects of all this? It's because of lack of skill and discipline in estimated cost in the original project plan. In your original project plan, there is a guideline. You have a budget. You have an estimated budget at completion. This is the project I'm going to spend in completing this project. But if there is poor decision management, you are going to have cost overrun. Another thing is that there is, you will also have in, inadequate details, a plan that will result in vulgar or inaccurate budgeting. Another key point you should also note that, note is schedule delay that we eat up more resources than anticipated. Another key point you should also consider is change in the project scope that are not reflected in the project audit. So all these key points I have just highlighted, they are the factors that can make you to run out of projects, that can make you to run out of, that will make you to run out of control costs. So if all these things you follow your project management plan, original project management plan, your costs will not growing in out of proportion. You'll be able to control the cost and you have a, 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 a project completed on cost. Next, I'm going to be talking about the impossible, okay, the impossible dream or unfocused goals project. Now, if you are trying to take up a project, there are quality of a good project that you as a project manager should be able to accept. Now, if you look at this place here, I list some goal settings for project management or for project manager. Allow your project to be specific, direct, and well-defined. The project should be measurable. The project should be achievable. That means it must reach success. The project must be realistic. That it must be practical and have empirical evidence. And the project must be timely. That means it must reach success and it must create what opportunity. Now, when there is unfocused project goals, this is what is going to happen. You have impossible projects. The project stemming from poor plan or lack of support, you should never accept that. 
the project already in the work that may have no line of sight to completion, you should not accept that as a vote, a project manager. Project that assume you for race for the uh, organization, uh, performing organization, such project, the project manager should not go into such project. And project in which management are fighting, managers are fighting with upper management to cancel or to update the project. Such project shouldn't be what accepted for you to manage because prevention is better than correction. It's better you prevent it from early stage that than you allow correction to now step in. Because by the time you are trying to make all this correction, maybe because they just force you into it and you willingly accept it. By the time you are inside, you may not be able to do the correction. And trying to make, do the correction will cause you to have a lot of budget and you have your cost overrun and it will affect your project decision. So next and not the least on my project, uh, on this presentation is the, the coolest staff. So what to do when you have a great people who do not actually know what they are doing in the project? If people are ignorant of their task and responsibility, what do you do? Remember best thing, best good project report or deliverable or execution or um, effectiveness in execution. Now, when you have a staff that are not responsible or they do not know what, they, what to do, what, how do you ensure that from the beginning of your project, how do you make such decision? Is that you develop an objective skill, skill appraisal system to select team member at the beginning of the project. You watch the team to see if too much time is spent in social activities, just like what these guys are doing. These are dynamic team. They are, uh, they, they, they are team. You can see that they are involving themselves in social activity. Then you can also consult or an outside contractor that can sometimes make up for the differences between uh, the skills and uh, allow a nice uh, team member to remain on the project in a lesser role. So all these are a way of ensuring that you do not have project team who do not know what they are doing. So from the beginning of your project planning, you define how you are going to have a skin appraisal, how you, skin assessment, how you are going to continue to encourage your team member to, you know, to develop their, their self and some other uh, things that assist them in performing their job responsibility. Now, I have some recommendation here for project managers. So how these are the tips to help you to reduce the impact of common project problems. Remember there's another, we say that action and reaction are equal. Uh, action and reaction, they are equal and what? Opposite. So when you want to ensure that you reduce the impact of common project management problems, you ask questions, then you listen and you observe. Then you communicate clearly and also homelessly be open. Then get a life. If life is really here, step down from the what? from the project, then always get close to your project team so that they will always communicate every um, project status or report to you because they are the ones that you are managing. They are the ones they, that will give you uh, project information. So always listen to their company and create a atmosphere for a good rapport between you and your project team. So question, so I thank you all for taking your time to listen to my presentation this evening. Thank you so much. So I will now hand over to my project leader. Sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Hilary, uh, for an excellent presentation and for ensuring that uh, we kept to uh, reasonable time uh, limits. Thank you so much. Uh, 
I'm sure that uh, members of the audience have uh, a few questions for you. Uh, I guess questions can be punched in the chat uh, window of this Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, but ahead of that, uh, what I want to do is to invite comments from our uh, group uh, members, our team members uh, that are here on this, uh, on this uh, call. Uh, so what I will do is, uh, I think almost all of them are here. So I'll, I'll, I'll just run through their names and just ask them for a quick to this question. So I'll start with Emeka, Emeka Duzo. Emeka, are you there? Quickly, uh, just yes, uh, I am. pull up your, your video and your voice so that we can, uh, we can see and appreciate you while you are speaking. Thank you. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, um, SD, SC, and um, um, everyone. Um, very good presentation. So I just want to add that um, every project um, requires um, timely delivery, um, proper management, and um, of course, um, uh, minimal costs. So in terms of waste reduction, that's one something I've also realized happens a lot in projects. You know, we find that there are so many wastes, wastages or in our processes. You know, so I think it's very key also, that's a common challenge that I've also identified, especially um, in, our, in this part of our, our, our uh, part where we are, you know, the processes are not really optimized. So we need to look for ways to optimize our processes such that we reduce um, um, waste. And um, a typical example will be uh, approval processes, just for you to get um, a particular um, equipment to site or to your project site, you find out that there are so many processes you need to go through, some of them which are not even um, digitalized. You know, you go through a lot of paper documentation and all that, you know, so a good way to really, really tackle waste is to look at the processes, come up with the right processes for our projects, and then get the right technology that suits the particular processes that we want to, to adopt. Uh, we find most times that it's actually the other way around here. We get the technology and then we'll try to force ourselves to work in line with the way the technology um, um, works. But actually I think a better way would be get your processes working correctly and then look for a tool that can help you optimize on those processes and achieve um, success. So that's just what I want to add, waste reduction, can be can can be reduced by um, um, looking at our workflows and our processes, ensuring that our people collaborate better. We remove silos and then we leverage data. You know, the world is a global village, at very well connected, and try to see what's happening out there and see what we can learn and see how we can bring that knowledge back into our project execution and delivery. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Emeka. Thanks for those uh, valuable uh, contributions. Um, I will quickly invite uh, Patrick Tari to make a comment, and then I will take a couple of questions from the audience uh, before we now invite comments from the other group members. So, because it's not about the group, it's about the audience as well. And uh, that's so graciously uh, laid out time to be able to attend this. So Patrick, just two minutes contribution. Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you, uh, Debo, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, basically, that was a good delivery, Larry, and uh, to the team. Uh, my, what I want to add to the discourse is that in every project, the project manager needs to be emotionally intelligent. You need to deploy your emotional intelligence, or else you just get messed up. It can mess your project up because for you to even select the particular person that will add value to your project, you have to be intelligent. If you sense that some person in your project is lacking, you have to be smart to understand and not over, not, you know, you don't overburden the person with too much load or else that can cause accident. And having an accident in your project can delay your project. Then the other one again, so I want to add to this discourse is that in every project, it is important at the end of the day, you try to have a small review. If you can have maybe 15 minutes review of what has been done today, the next day will be faster. Errors will be 
um, errors will be minimal. Those are my two take. I want to add to this discourse for today. Thank you, Debo. Over to Thank you. you, Patrick. Minimizing errors and uh, making sure that uh, you work on improving the elements of your emotional uh, intelligence. Uh, thanks a lot. So very quickly, I want to, uh, uh, Hilary, I hope you have uh, you've been able to drink a glass of, of water because I have a couple of questions from the audience uh, for you. You might be doing a, a, a bit of talking now. So I have one from Undubrisi Okereke. He says, as per scheduling, how do we manage that more effectively? Which project management tools will you recommend for typical development phase of oil and gas projects? Uh, obviously, I mean, once Hilary answers, answers, any member of the group can also chip in uh, with their contribution to that question. So which project management tools will you recommend for typical development phase of oil and gas projects? Hilary, over to you. Hello? Yeah, Hilary. Did you get that question? No, I did not get the question, sir. It is in the audience. Uh, it's in that chat uh, group. There's um, the chat window. As per scheduling, how do we manage it more effectively? Which tools will you recommend for typical development phase of oil and gas projects? This is from the PC. So, okay, it says as per scheduling, how yes. do we manage that more effectively? Is that right. the question, sir? That is the question, yes. So which project management tool will you recommend for typically development phase of oil and gas projects? Yeah, okay. Uh, sir, I think somebody else should assist him for on this. Okay, you want you want some help here? Okay. Uh, Emeka? Yes, sir. Or Patrick, do you want to take it? <laughs> uh, there are several. Oh, uh, uh, no, uh, there is one. Uh, one, one I mean, it, it, there's, a, there's a project, but there's a, a software or an application called Microsoft Project. Yeah, it's actually it. crazy, but it's a very, very, very solid tool for establishing baselines of projects and being able to track and monitor. You know, because for me, project management has to do with managing, planning, scheduling, and monitoring. Now, the question, you know, is directed towards scheduling. So, a, a Gantt chart uh, approach using Microsoft Projects, I think, is a valuable tool that readily comes to mind. You know which uh, we can use for uh, even oil and gas projects, and I'm, I mean I'm on a project right now. You know a facilities uh, a development project for gas uh, gas uh, gathering, and uh, that is that is our primary reference as far as uh, being able to schedule effectively uh, is. So I, I don't know if uh, I hope I've been able to respond uh, properly to the BC so that we can go on to the next question, uh, which is from Daniel Madwago, and it says generally. A project is made up of sub deliverables and milestones. What can a project manage, manager do if he finds out that he cannot deliver on an important aspect of the project? Any member of the group can take this on, please. Uh, including, not, I'm not limited to Hillary. So, Patrick, if you are, Emeka, Ayodeji. Okay. You are, What's the question again? The question is. A project is made up of sub deliverables and milestones. What can a project manager do if he or she finds out that they cannot deliver on an important aspect of the project? Again, you know, look at oil and gas projects. By the way, the question is on the tax. Uh, uh, Patrick, go ahead. Okay, for this guy. When you find out that if you have a review that you can't deliver on a particular aspect of it, on your review meeting that you're having in the evening, you just find a way around it. Like I found out that like in a, some projects that I've been part of, I found out that they gave us a timeline, especially if you're in the oil and gas industry, where you need to deliver gas to LNG, you need to deliver gas to EP, uh, LME Petrochemical. And they gave you a timeline that, see, you have a window to do these projects and deliver. I hope that we need to change several some valves. And along the line, whether another condition came into play, I can deliver a particular part. <laughs> we have to review it. And the next thing we do is that if you can't deliver this other part, we look for another, maybe the next window that will, that will be possible. So that's one thing I look at. That's why it's important in every project you do, 
have a small time, a small time, maybe in the evening or so, you guys review, 15, 20 minutes, review your, at your talks. That will eliminate uh, this kind of uh, maybe miss opportunities for taking uh, hold on the critical part. Thank you. Thank you, man. But just to add to that, you know, um, in, in uh, for effective project manager uh, management, you know, uh, which like the uh, person who has the question, Daniel has said, uh, asked, he says that uh, there are sub that are mastered. It is very important to have a change management protocol, right, embedded within your project. Uh, uh, that you are able to uh, have a, for, a fallback option if you need to make a change, particularly to the sequence of events, you know, because some aspects of your projects are actually uh, scheduled in sequential manner. That is the completion, the commencement of one aspect might depend on the completion of a prior one. So it's always good to have some change management protocol uh, adequately uh, uh, embedded within. Okay. Uh, we have another question from uh, the section chairman. Uh, it says that even with technology in the modern era, why are projects still being, being delivered uh, at high costs? In terms of the project challenges, which needs more attention to reduce costs, achieve quality, and meet project schedule. So basically, I mean, despite all the technology that we have deployed uh, in the modern era, why do we still deliver projects at relatively high costs? Uh, what somebody to comment on that? And of course, anybody from the audience is free to comment as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Yeah, yeah Patrick, Hello. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Behind, uh, to that, vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, some projects again too. <laughs> Uh, there was a project we handled uh, maybe ab about uh, a year ago, and we found out that at the end of the project, I was a part of those people that was handling the course. They brought so many unseen costs to us to vet. So what I see is this: oftentimes, sometimes when you carry out projects, it is what we'll, it is, there's what we we'll have the planned and the actual. So sometimes. I come to understand that the actual, it is not always go. It doesn't go as planned. We might plan to lay pipeline from here to Bonnie. At the end of the day, this is what we plan. This is the cost we plan. As we are doing the actual, or the as built, as the case may be, the, you you find some deviations. You you plan to go this way. When you get there, you see obstacles. I did not foresee. So those things are those elements that will raise the the, the project execution high. That's why no matter how you plan, no matter how you do all these things, you still always see where the cost might, will, will vary. There's plus or minus in every project. That's what I, that's what I want to add. I can leave the, 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 the okay, open for Apple to make a contribution to. Okay, I, I, I'll just like to add that um, technology is an enabler, right? It's not really what is um, actually going to help you deliver the project, so to speak, is everything is not really built around that uh, technology. There are so many other elements involved towards project delivery. So technology is just one part of it. Like in my own comment, I talked about waste, waste reduction. There's so much, we find out that there are so many um, elements that also contribute to what drives these high costs in our projects. It could be the manpower selection. If Patrick talked about emotional intelligence. It could be the manpower. How did you uh, select your team? What are your processes? You know, there's so many wastages that could be involved in those processes that could lead, lead to NPT, that could lead to loss of even resources and time management as well. You know, when we talk of cost reduction, we don't even look at it in terms of just money. Time is also of, of the essence. So I think that if we get our processes right, first and foremost, then we can look for the right technologies that can help us drive those processes. But what we do is the other way around. You know, we get the technology and then we'll force ourselves. Meanwhile, that technology may be way too expensive and we're utilizing only about 2% of what that technology can do. You know, it's not really suited for what we want it for, but everybody is using it. Let's jump on it, let's get it. And at the end of the day, our, our projects still um, suffer. You know, the collaboration is not there. People still work in silos. We have our processes that are still manual and that have not been digitized. You know, we find that all these things really end up 
leading to those cost overruns and very high uh, project delivery costs. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, let me just uh, Sorry. Include, okay, go ahead. from the point uh, my man, uh, project management team have uh, highlighted. Another uh, cause of uh, why there is high cost is because of the physical resources. Because when a organization is performing a project, it may not have all the necessary resources. So especially the physical one, which is equip the equipment, the machine, the, for example, the copy, and some other thing that, that we need to ensure that this project is successful. So consider all these. We result at a very low high cost. And as our one of our project team member, Bella said, the team. So you may need to employ new team members. So if the team members do not have the necessary skills, to perform their project. They will need to upskill, and you will have to trade them. So the duration at which you will trade them, the more you trade them, the more the cost will increase. So when you factor in all these, all these uh, elements, all these quality, you find out that it will impact your project uh, cost. And that's what I just want to submit in this uh, aspect. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot, um, Hilary. Uh, at this point, I want to invite, um, okay. if, anyone, if you are you, you are still online, uh, your contribution to the discussion as a project member, as a project team member, beg your pardon. If anyone, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Debo. Uh, okay, good evening. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very um, insightful um, presentation, and the energy in the room. Uh, it's very, it's very nice to see how how interested people are on this topic. Yeah. So, so basically, it's about what has been said generally. But I would like to mute at this point because I'm caring for my daughter here, who will be, who will be making so much noise and will allow me to contribute very effectively. So. Uh, please bear with me on this one, but I really, really align with the project team. Thank you. Well, it's okay. she's, a, she's a potential petroleum engineer. We don't mind her. We don't mind her noise. Or her, her, her. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's she's contributing to the discussion. But thanks a lot, eh? Ify, and uh, very well understood. Uh, I think Ayodej is also on board. Ayodej, I didn't Can you uh, give us your own comments? I already do. It seems his uh, mic is not active. Okay. Um, uh, I think we, at this point, we don't have the rest of the comments of uh, the, uh, the chat window are basically comments, not questions. Uh, so I think we've been able to do uh, some justice to it. So at this point, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to hand over to the section chairman I think so that I can be the one to give the closing remarks and uh, and vote of thanks since uh, I've been doing quite a bit of talking, you know. So I take seven now on the agenda. Section Chairman, uh, Bada, over to you. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, but uh, normally on the agenda for the closing remarks, is normally any member of the group or the group leader. Uh, my own part is basically to do the opening remarks so that we give more opportunity to the group members, you know, to have their final say and to, uh, you know, so it would be a nice time maybe to have a quick uh, uh, round again amongst um, the team just for the closing comments, something like that. But overall, I just still want to thank, uh, especially uh, Debo Fagbami, who is, uh, uh, as we know, is our section director. Uh, and it's one of the very few section directors that we have that are leading uh, these study groups. And you can see the impact. Um, what uh, the public is seeing here is just, for me, mind not what they discuss in their group. 
It's very, very exciting. And if you are not still a member of SPE, I think it's a moment you can drop your name in the in the comments and then our membership team are, are there and then they can sit through that you are a member. And also if you are a member, but you are not part of any group, I think it's also a nice one to let us know and we have different groups. So on that note, I, I, I will thank again um, the group leader and uh, the presenter also, Hilary, uh, I've seen a lot that uh, you are doing. And also for the other uh, members of the team, uh, well done for a great job. Please don't let us stop here. Uh, the discussion should continue. And of course, uh, also on LinkedIn, which a lot of people I can see comments they are making uh, regarding some of the things you are posting. So uh, let's take it on also to LinkedIn. And of course, we'll share some of the comments on LinkedIn to SP Connect. And then from there, so it will be to and from from SP Connect back to LinkedIn. And then perhaps uh, let's start looking at the follow-up topic for January. So thank you very much. Uh, and let's have a very good night. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, SC. Do, we have a, do you have any announcements on the next um, presentations? Totally good. Yes, so Marianne should be on this. Uh, I've seen her post uh, is on the chat. Uh, Marianne, are you there? Or you want me to? Marianne, are you there? Yes, yes, I see. I'm, I'm here. Okay, you can give information regarding tomorrow's study group. Okay, good evening, everyone. So once again, just like I said on the comment section, uh, on behalf of the management study group, I invite you all to join us tomorrow in another engagement just like this one. And we'll be discussing on emotional intelligence, importance of emotional intelligence in the workplace. So to my excitement, Patrick said it all and he was able to integrate the need for emotional intelligence, even in project management. So I'll be very excited to see everyone here join us tomorrow. So the registration link is already on the chat section. It's already on the chat section. I pasted it as a comment. So you can register with us, join us, same time tomorrow by 6 p.m. And we're going to start. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Marianne. Um, on these notes, I just want to, uh, once again, appreciate everybody that um, made out time to attend this presentation. I want to uh, uh, extend my profound appreciation to the uh, presenter, uh, Hilary oboga -Yige. Thank you very much. I think he did justice to it. And of course, to uh, the rest of the team who were able to uh, show up here and contributed, Emeka, Patrick, Ipanywa, and go. Thanks a lot uh, for your time and presence. It was uh, very, very, you know, uh, comforting to see that you all were here, you know, uh, and we didn't leave Hillary in the uh, hanging out dry. I think you, and your contributions were very, very much appreciated. Uh, also, uh, many thanks to the section chairman, uh, Bolabada, for and, uh, pushing the group to maintain focus throughout the uh, days and weeks leading up to this uh, uh, finale, uh, as well as to the rest of the section, uh, Polako section. Uh, kudos to the creators of this uh, study groups. I think it's been very, very useful for the society and uh, it's also relevant to the pursuit of the vision of, uh, of SPE. Uh, so on that note, I want to appreciate everybody and uh, I'll sign out at this point in time. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Chairman, I think we can, end, I guess we can end the meeting. Yes, it's at your, <laughs> yeah, very good. Thank you.